Hey guys, welcome to our third video in the Writing Great PHCRs video series. This video is going to talk about the assessment portion of our charts, so let's get started. So first off, what the heck are we doing here? We're making a full video for one line of our PHCRs. And in short, yeah, the answer is yes, we're actually going to do that. We're going to make a short video about it. Uh, but let's examine why this line of your chart is actually worthy of a full video in our series. So the A in SOAP is assessment. Uh, it can be a big deal sometimes, but not always. Uh, there's a little bit of controversy with this line in EMS in general um, because we're supposed to put our assessment of the patient, not our diagnosis of the patient. So the big question is in EMS, do we diagnose in the field? I would argue yes, it's just a different form of diagnosis than something a physician would make. So maybe that's, you know, not the true essence of diagnosis or to diagnose. I'm not really sure, but when we treat a patient who's not breathing and has no pulse, for example, we've diagnosed that as cardiac arrest. And there's, well, a million different research uh, things to validate that. But um, think what you'd like. I'm sticking with yes, I say we do diagnose, kind of, sort of. So what do I put on the A line? Well, put your best guess to what's going on with the patient. This should be also what you treated the patient for. So you don't want to put down a few things that you think might be going on with the patient that you didn't treat. So what shouldn't go on the A-line? Well, if you're having trouble choosing between two, two conditions, just go ahead and put both. It's, that's totally fine. But don't put down a handful of your differentials. Um, this can cause the hospital team a headache. I've had some doctors in the past when I was a young paramedic say, hey man, you put way too many things down on your assessment line. That causes me some headaches when things get brought up down the road and, you know, the family will say, hey, how come the paramedic thought my loved one was experiencing this and you didn't even do any tests to rule that out? So that's not a you know 100% reason to not do it, but in, as a general rule, put down one or two things you think is going on with the patient. You don't need to put down a bunch of different things. So here's an example. We've been working on a chest pain patient um, and we're going to put down possible chest pain with presumed cardiac etiology. So notice the word possible. Unless you're treating someone for a 100% known condition, you should always put possible before whatever it is you're going to put down for the assessment. So watch the patient interaction video again if you need to and put down your best one or two assessments. The video should make it pretty obvious what's going on. But if you get tripped up, go ahead, take a look at our PHCR we've written that's going to be at the end of video four and see what we wrote down. Oh, Ma'am, my name's Dan. I'm with the ambulance. What seems to be the problem today? My chest just feels really tight. Okay, and it seems like you're having some difficulty breathing, is that right? Yeah. Okay. So her chief complaint is, again, difficulty breathing. So the first thing I'm going to do is move through my ABCs. Uh, a, airway. Uh, I, as I listen to her, can I hear air moving through just fine? Do I hear strider or anything like that? She is having difficulty breathing. Okay. She is moving good air. Okay, so she's moving air well enough. Uh, so breathing, um, I would assess a respiratory rate um, either with a stethoscope or by standing air watching and counting. What? What is her respiratory rate? She's breathing rate? at 24 times per minute. Okay. So uh, along with the breathing, I also want to listen to lung sounds. So can you take a couple of deep breaths for me? All right. Last deep breath. Okay. What are my lung sounds? You have wheezes in all fields. All right, uh, based on that, I'm going to go ahead and put my patient on high flow oxygen right now. Um, I'm gonna use a non-rebreather and go at 15 liters per minute. You can verbalize putting the oxygen on the patient. Okay. Uh, so after breathing, we're gonna move on to circulation. First, I'll check a pulse. 
What pulse is my pulse rate? Pulse is present and it's at 96 beats per minute. Okay. Uh, do, I, do I note any major bleeding? No major bleeding. Okay. And then uh, moving on to skin, uh, skin color looks pale. Um, do I note any cyanosis anywhere? No cyanosis. Okay. And uh, as I feel it, does she feel warm? Does she feel cold? Normal temperature. Okay. And do I notice, uh, is her skin um, wet? Is she sweating? Anything like that? No. Normal. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make this a priority patient. Um, we'll try and transport her as quickly as possible. Uh, so next I'll move on to my, uh, my OPQRST. So ma'am, how long ago did this start? About an hour ago. Okay. And what were you doing when this started? What provoked this? I was just watching TV. Okay, just watching TV. Um, and can you describe the feeling for me? Yeah, it just feels really tight in my chest. Okay. And on a scale of 1 to 10, 0 being not difficult to breathe, 10 being I can't breathe at all, where would you rate this? I'd say about an 8. About an 8. Okay. And again, how long has this been going on for? For an hour. Okay. So, uh, and then have, after I've got my OPQRST done, I'll move on to my sample and try and get a little bit more information. So, um, do you have any allergies? Yeah, I'm allergic to penicillin. So you're allergic to penicillin. Are you in an, on any medications currently? Albuterol. You take the albuterol? Okay. And uh, past medical history? I have asthma. Okay. You have, oh, so that's probably what the albuterol is for. Um, what was the last thing that you took uh, as far as food, last oral intake? I had breakfast this morning. Okay. Yeah. All right. And events leading up to this, what, what were you doing again that caused this? I was just watching TV. Just sitting there watching TV. All right. So uh, next I would move on to my secondary assessment. Um, for this patient, I really want to listen to one sounds again and reassess that. So I'll listen again. Have my lung sounds changed at all with the oxygen? No, they're still wheezy. Okay. Has my patient's ability to breathe, does she feel a little bit better with the oxygen? She is breathing easier with the oxygen. Okay. So after my secondary assessment, I would obtain a baseline set of vitals. So first I would check on, acquire a pulse rate. Her pulse is 90 beats per minute. 90 beats per minute. Okay. And what's her respiratory rate now? As her respiratory I rate is 20 breaths per minute. 20 breaths per minute. Okay. And lastly, I would get a blood pressure. What is her blood pressure? Her blood pressure was 112 over 70. Okay.